Hello, hello, it's your girl Bella Isis of LearnSpellCasting.org. Welcome to my new Patreon. Um, in this series, I want to discuss subjects that I can't really freely discuss on my YouTube channel, uh, which is Learn Spellcasting on YouTube. And in this Patreon, the purpose is to share with you deeper knowledge, things that YouTube might censor. So let's get started today with how to use DNA, yeah, body fluids, hair, nails, skin scrapings in your spells. Now, first, let's cover the purpose of using DNA. When you are using DNA, it's one of the strongest links to the individual that you wish to affect through a spell. Now, they can be used for love spells. They can be used for breakup spells. They can be used for any type of domination spell or a spell that you want to target a specific person. And it is, I would say, the strongest element that you can use to influence, affect, dominate, manipulate, cause whatever change in attitude or specific actions that you can use on an individual. So there is an order of what is really strong in spells. The first thing that I would say, the strongest of them all, is something that connects the person. So you would use either their hair. It could be hair from their head, hair from underarms, hair from the pubic area. It can be um, skin. Um, some people use those pumice stones to scrape the skin on the bottom of their feet. That could be used. It can be um, fluids such as perspiration. So if you can get a hold of someone's dirty sock, dirty t-shirt, dirty underwear, um, their hat with their sweat, that can be used as well. Um, nail clippings, of course, from hands or feet. Uh, let's see, saliva, if they chewed a piece of gum or smoked a cigarette. Um, think of it, you've, I'm sure you've seen TV shows and police dramas on uh, your telly or on movie screens where cops can find a person through their DNA. Yes, yes, they can, and so can you. It is the closest link possible, okay? And then after that, you can use a person's name, you can use a person's um, photograph with their name, um, or just the photo itself. You can use other things that we'll go into in this series. Now, the purpose of using someone's DNA in conjunction with any type of specific spell you attempt to cast on them is really so that it works faster. It is the strongest thing out there. And I will teach you some other secrets for if you can't get a hold of DNA. Okay, so let's jump right into it. How do you use it? Well, it's simple. You literally combine whatever you have as a part of the spell. And what I like to do is um, I will hold the item in my hand and say the person's name. And it's as though I literally have the person in my hand. And you focus on what you desire uh, to happen. You can speak out loud the spell. So, for instance, if you get a hold of a man's semen, yes, semen is very powerful. And let's flip it. Let's not use it for a love spell. Let's use it for a controlling spell so that this person cannot have intercourse with anyone else. You, you call out loud that person's name and you, you bind them and their sexual nature through their semen with words. You can also add it um, to lamps. You can add it to jars. You can add it in whatever method you are using. Because see, think of a spell as a cooking recipe. And it, is, it can be as traditional as, let's say, a honey jar, right? So you would take the person's semen. Now, semen dries. So let's say you have it on a 
piece of washcloth. You can cut that washcloth out, a piece of it where the semen is located, and put it inside of a jar and add honey to it and add herbs like uh, damiana and add um, patchouli. And in, in this case, you're actually trying to entice the person towards you sexually. So you're adding herbs and, and spices, cinnamon, and um, other powerful things like rose petals. If you want that person to be sexually, see, you're connecting the man's sexual semen, right, that comes from his body. It is unique to him. You're not just calling out every John Doe on planet Earth. You're spe specifying this John Doe. Get what I'm saying? So it is, I'm telling you, it is the most powerful thing you can use. Another way of using DNA and sexual fluids is your own. Yes, your own urine, your own menstrual blood, your own semen. Now, traditionally, and I'm sure those that are... Uh, perhaps Italian-American can attest to this, and Caribbeans as well, and African-American can attest to the fact that most mothers would tell their sons, do not eat anything dark, like spaghetti. <laughs> I'm serious, because women, when they want to bind a man to them, of course, it's, it can work on same sex, okay? It's not just women, but traditionally, a woman who is still menstruating, can take just a few drops of her menstrual blood, add it to uh, tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, and feed it to her lover. Now what is happening is she is, of course, not just dumping it in and whatever. She's adding seasons. She's making it taste good. And what you're doing is you're compelling this man to have you deep within his heart, deep within his mind, he is drawn to you. He can't let go of you. Even if he stopped liking you, he still has to return to you. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, there is another level to this. And because of health concerns, we are now in modern times. We are in times when, you know, you have to be healthy. So I avoid feeding people body fluids. I think it's no longer necessary. You can still use your menstrual blood. But in this case, I would use it, for example, your semen, your menstrual blood, your saliva. You use it in a container spell where you are influencing someone to do something that you want, usually to be under your control or to be in love with you or sexually attracted to you. So you would um, put your DNA on that person's photo and then you concentrate on it and you are lighting a red candle for passionate love and or a pink candle for romantic love or a purple candle when you are dominating. Purple stands for domination. And of course, if you don't have any of these colorful candles that correspond and signify what the intention of the spell is, then you can always use a plain white candle. Now, I'm not getting into candle color significance. That'll be in another uh, podcast and video. But the point of using um, your DNA and candle color signif significance, my tongue is tied today, is because you are attuning that color symbolism with what you want to happen. Why don't I use black? The color black is a color that absorbs. It doesn't emit um, its energy. So black candles actually just kind of hold the energy. So when I use black candles, it's usually for casting a harming spell. It's not that black is necessarily a negative color, not at all. Black is simply something that light passes through it and it keeps it. It doesn't bounce back into the atmosphere. So then when you're using black, and this is just a real quick reference on how not to use black unless you're harming a 
again, according to my tradition. Again, referencing the cooking and the recipe, when you cast a spell, it can be traditional, like the traditional menstrual blood in spaghetti, but you can be as creative as you wish to be as long as the symbolism used, whether it be candle colors, whether it be uh, spit, uh, you can use literal shit, you can use excrement in your spells. Again, excrement would not be used in a love spell because unless you're shitting on the person, do you see what I'm saying? So again, back to the uh, tying of cooking with spell casting um, reference, what you are doing has to match the intention. What you are using has to match the intention. So if you're going to use human excrement or animal excrement, a dog, a cat, a bird, you can use any type of excrement. Remember what does in your culture and your society and within your belief system, what does caca signify? Well, caca signifies um, something you throw away. So if you wanted to cast a spell uh, using your rival's hair, mm, you got her hair from a brush that she laid down and you just grabbed a few strands. You don't need a whole, you don't need her whole entire hair of from her head. You just need a couple of strands or his hair. You take that hair and if you want her to feel like crap, right, then you use DNA from a dog, right? A stray dog's caca. You put it on her hair, on her picture, on her uh, name, and you speak forth what you want to happen. So that's another example of using uh, excrement. You can use urine. You can use your urine to dominate someone. Now, this is a different type of intention. When you're dominating someone, it's almost... Uh, it's manipulative. You don't care about their free will or if they love you or not. You are telling them what to do and you're pissing on them. You're marking your territory. That's another flip which can be used in a love spell. See how as I speak, I'm coming up with different circumstances and situations and how to use it. So this is just a quick overview of why you would use DNA how to use the DNA, and what is the intention behind that specific DNA. So if you're using someone else's DNA, always wear gloves. You never know what illnesses they may have, what health conditions they may have. Um, I, now because of COVID, I use full gloves, um, sterile gloves, and I use a mask. I don't want to inhale anybody's DNA. Think about what you're doing, um, or rather prepare before you actually go and do something, especially nowadays with these health issues. If you have any questions about this or any other topic, go ahead and um, just write in the uh, form here on Patreon. I love this. This is no longer going to be a place where you get spam bots uh, telling you about someone in, I don't want to say a country, I don't want to offend anyone, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, like in YouTube. That's why I disabled all the comments in YouTube. So hit me up with any questions you may have. You can always reach me at learnspellcasting.org, or you can just leave it right here, and I will answer it as soon as I can. I love you all. Thank you so much for being my patron. Oh, God bless. Bye-bye.